Thomas Hitman Hearns, Joe Lewis Barrow of Detroit. But they were both boxer punchers. Well said. All right, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Van Dandel Arena here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Mr. Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with your King of Beers, Budweiser, and Bets.com is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. Approved and regulated by the Michigan State Athletic Commission, Chairman Bradley A. Wright, Inspector in Charge, Steve Mann. Should this contest go the distance, the three judges deciding it will be from Mexico, Guillermo Ayo, from Curacao, Harold Lawrence, and from Canada, Jack Woodburn. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from Michigan, USA, Frank Garza. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver and officially weighing in at 134 and one half pounds. He has an outstanding professional record, 32 bouts with 31 victories and only one defeat. And he has demonstrated his awesome power with his 30 knockouts. From Toyendo Venda, South Africa, the former WBU world champion, the WBC number one ranked challenger in the world, Philip Paimbondo! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with fur. His official weight stands at 135 pounds. He has a perfect professional record consisting of 30 bouts, 30 victories, including 20 knockouts, and he is always rated among the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. He is the prize-fighting pride of Grand Rapids, Michigan, USA, the two-time world champion and reigning, defending, undefeated, lightweight champion of the world, Pretty Boy, Floyd Mayweather. Chief second in box rolling. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. This is right up over his belly button, so I'm going to give you the top of this, top of his belt. Okay, his is right there, so it's got to be up above the belt. All right, touch him up, come out at the belt, may the best man win. I've never seen a fighter wear fur into a fight before, even fake fur. Hopefully the fur will fly in this fight. Well, he's filthy rich. In his toughest fight as a winner against a fellow South African fighter named Cassius Baloy, en route to the only decision win of his career, Indo, in the last two rounds of that fight, threw nearly 300 punches. He can become an offensive whirlwind against a manageable target. Floyd Mayweather is no manageable target. Mayweather goes right after him. I said he wouldn't go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but he seemed to want to pick a fight tonight. Or at least test what Endo has. One thing Endo has is a long jab. You can see there, his extension on the jab, he creates a lot of space. Mayweather stepping in with a good, quick left hook. And landing a right hand over the top. 
Lloyd Mayweather, when he chooses to fight offensively, can be a very accurate puncher. The challenger seems to have a longer jab, but Mayweather sticks his harder. So if they happen to jab at the same time, Indoor is going to get the worst of it. Mayweather looking for an opening over that jab. It's a long ways to look for an opening, though. It's too high. Endo is said to be particularly dangerous with uppercuts. Lloyd Mayweather won't want to be in range for uppercuts very often. Endo's basic knockout punch is a right hand which he can sneak in from a variety of angles. Big right hand by Mayweather, perfectly thrown. And there's the right hand over the left with Endo tends to keep drop. And he's following up. Guy who can punch around the ring. You don't want to do that. Nice punch to the body by Mayweather. And another good right hand up top. Floyd Mayweather has shown some brilliant offensive skills already here in the first round. Another straight right lands for Mayweather as he fainted and then delivered over Endo's lazy left. And you can already see, George, he sticks that jab out there, brings it back low, leaves it out there sometimes. Mayweather could have a festival with counter rights. That's right, but this guy seems to take a good punch and comes right back after you. In that weight division, you don't want to throw all of your power away in the first two or three rounds unless you're sure to knock out. Good jab by Endo. Left hook by Mayweather. Backs Endo across the ring. Big right hand by Mayweather. He has landed solid punches in the first round, finding and using his opportunities very well. Now this should be Endo's fight right now. Get Mayweather against the rope. Get those points in. Forget about the knockout. Win every round. But Mayweather muscles him in the position where he likes him. Hits him with two more straight hands before the end of the round. Brilliant round for Floyd Mayweather. Seemed to do just about whatever he wanted to do. You got to throw more than one jab. He's timing you on the jab, son, with the right hand. Okay? You got to throw that right hand, too, now, all right? Remember, you got to hit something, son. Mayweather claims he doesn't watch tapes of his opponent, but somebody in his camp surely has because that strategy came from careful uh, wa of watching of Endu's fights. You know, some guys adapt pretty good. They see you dropping that lazy left jab, yeah. they can adapt right quick. Well, particularly when you're born to fight and been fighting all your life, like Floyd Mayweather. I mean, he came out of the crib fighting. This is what he does. Referee Frank Garza sending Endo to a neutral corner, and now Endo will come back out, and they'll start round two. Clock was momentarily stopped. Now it begins. Harold Letterman giving the first round to Mayweather. Anybody could have seen that. And you heard Roger, I mean, excuse me, you heard Tommy Brooks, hired as an advisor by Endo's corner for this fight, saying to Endo, when you jab, jab more than once because he's timing your jab and landing right hands over. There he did. He threw three straight right hands, uh, left hands, and then followed it with a right. But already Mayweather now is not standing his ground quite so menacingly as he did early in the first round. I think this is just what a boxer wants. A guy following you around the ring trying to knock you out. That's the only time you can really be a good boxer. Yeah. And dude, his corner told him to throw that jab two or three times. Don't just throw it out there lazily once. And Nelson Mandela, who was an outstanding amateur fighter, uh, told Endu that he should keep him, keep Mayweather on the end of his jab and punch to the body. That is excellent advice. The problem is that he's fighting a champion in his hometown and he has to be aggressive. Not only a champion, but a good champion.
made a good point though in round one, George. Endo can take Mayweather's solid shots. Yeah, he's not afraid to be hit. And with the right hand there, he momentarily displaces Mayweather. Best shot of the fight for Endo, and his confidence goes up a little bit. And now he's jabbing twice at a time, and Mayweather didn't counter with the right. Suddenly, Philip Endo is much more in the fight. Break, break. Mayweather hasn't gone to the body enough yet. If this fight goes on, big tall guy like that can take it out of you. Mayweather targeting Endo's head with his right hand twice. And using his quickness to get in the left. Little left hook inside by Endo. But Floyd Mayweather had a little offensive rally there moments before. There's the uppercut that Endo loves to use. Mayweather partially blocked it. Endo sticking the jab in his face and Mayweather grins. Good body shot by Endo. This is a pretty good round for Endo. He's much more in the fight than he was in round one. Perhaps because he's decided he can take Mayweather's shots and he's going to walk through them. Look, when he's on the ropes, you got to hit something. Hit it, hit that shoulder, hit the arm. Double the jabs, double the jabs. Step, pull over the right chest, come back on the left too. You know what, when they showed you in the gym how the guy lays on the ropes, what you do? Huh? You got to have that, son. Thank you, Rolf. All right, Jeff, get a bite. You can't find it. Take your jab away from him. Can't find it. on my lips. Here's Mayweather with the right hand again. He lands it flush. And dude deals with it. Floyd Mayweather at this weight is simply not a big punish a puncher. Although if he hits and do with enough of those, he'll chop him down. He's an awfully accurate puncher when he needs to be. George, you agree with uh, Larry and me that Endo's confidence went up in round two? No doubt about it. He, he saw himself back in the fight. Doing what he want to do. The guy comes, break, break, gets break. him to the rope. It looked like they've been training for when he gets up against the rope because he threw body shots. Yeah, we heard Tommy Brooks talking between rounds about how, remember, we told you what to do when he lays on the ropes like that. Hands are free, guys. Your hands are free. Let him go, Philip. Let him go. Let him go, Philip. Break. Let him go. Let him go. Mayweather trapping in those left glove under his right arm there before referee Frank Garza separates them. Garza, Michigan referee, chosen by Ring Magazine earlier this year as one of the ten best in the sport. Watch your head, guys. Break! Watch your head. Man, you can hear the sound of induced punches now. This is not a night when Floyd Mayweather can easily afford to be betrayed by his brittle hands. Yeah, and he's landing a lot of hard shots to the head, and they will start taking account on his hands pretty soon. Those hurt your hands more than your head than the other fellow's head. Tonight he may just have to keep punching through the pain as Arturo Gatti did in his third fight with Mickey Ward when he won with a broken right hand. Mayweather standing and fighting here and not getting the best of it at the moment. And though, beginning to show the kind of energy he showed in throwing so many punches against Cassius Beloit. I like that Mayweather starting to go around to the body with that left hook. Mayweather trapping Endo in the corner and landing three power shots in a row. Endo showing a little slickness there as well. Yeah, you know in South Africa, it's the best kept secret. They develop good fighters there. Yep. 
The trainers are good. The teachers are good. I kind of think we ought to do one fight per month there, George. Twelve oh, trips a year to South Africa. Get a little condo in Cape Town. They got good condos there. I got some advertisement for one when I was there recently. Get them up. Get them up. They didn't give you one? <laughs> now, you have to pay a little. Mayweather with a right hand over the top. Triple left hook. Larraping the right hand. Brings the crowd to its feet. Much more of a slugfest than we expected. Floyd Mayweather promised this. So far, he's living up to the promise. Will it serve him well over the long haul? When he fall, when he fall back up on the rope, take me the right hook. Keep touching him to the body. Keep touching him to the body. Okay. Body shots weighing him down. He's he, he gonna, he gonna come by there anyway. He can't find him. He's scared to throw that jack. Let's him know. Your fight's out in the center of the ring. Stay off these ropes. He's too quick for that. Come on. Mayweather using his speed and skill against a taller opponent to be more offensive than he usually is. Copy box numbers through the rounds three or through the first three rounds find Mayweather landing 37 out of 76 power shots, 49 percent. Tremendously accurate power punching so far by Floyd Mayweather. Endo only 15 of 97. Harold, how do you have it scored through three rounds? Up engine, two rounds to one, 29 to 28. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jimmy Rats one and three. I love the way Floyd fights. He just gets in his chest, takes it right to him, bangs him with right hands over the top that had a real scoring punches. But in round two, he backed off and Endo got in the scoring shots. Two to one Mayweather. I like it when a good boxer slides around the ring. Drawing the guy into your shots. Mayweather's doing a good job. I don't like when he gets on the road. Chopping right hand lands for Endo. And he keeps coming with the body shots. And Lloyd Mayweather is... He's allowed to Mayweather. guard his body with his arms. He's allowed Mayweather to get in the pocket now. He's right in the middle of everything he does. So even when he's throwing shots, he's right there to throw shots back. Mayweather coming to the body with a good left hook. Chopping upstairs with the right hand. Back to the body again with the left. Endo trying to duck and slip. Mayweather making contact with his tremendous accuracy. Big right hands for Mayweather. And a solid left as Endo came forward. Endo doesn't discourage easily. No, he came a long ways from home to win this thing. He's going to give it everything he's got. Endo has been training for a month in St. Petersburg, Florida. They brought him to Michigan more or less at the last minute to prevent the cold from creeping into his bones, they said. Woo, the jab to the body by Mayweather. Good right and the left upstairs by Mayweather. Perfect left hook through the guard. And the left to the body, chopping left on the chin. Brilliant stuff from Pretty Boy Floyd. That's when speed starts, starts to dazzle you a little bit. Throws all these shots and then he's out of your eyesight. You can't find him. That's what Mayweather's doing. He steps right back in the pocket again. Endo has decided to use his offense as his defense. Keep punching and things will take care of themselves. That's who he is. But sooner or later he's got to stop. Right there. Good round. Mayweather getting the best of it, but Endo showing his desire. Keep taking with the left hook and right hook, okay? Crowd and Van Andel up and cheering. No, 
nah, nah, you fine. Nah, you fine. Hey, he just, uh, he, he threw. Body shots are killing him. He threw. He got nothing left. Nothing left. Take right hand to the butt. Keep taking with the right. Are oh, you feeling good? Yeah, yeah. What does it do? Tommy says, put your shoulder in your punches, baby. Look. And when you throw that jab. his body, come down to the head. When you throw that jab. Floyd Mayweather giving one of his more impressive performances uh, since, certainly since the Diego Corrales fight because he's in there with a guy who will stay close to him and chase him down. George Filippendo has spent his whole career working with Nick Durant. They hired Tommy Brooks to work with him just for this fight. Now Brooks, it seems, is doing at least as much talking in the corner between rounds as is Durant, sometimes they're both talking. Is that going to disorient the fight? Oh, no, no. I think it's the best thing he could get. You get this far away from home, add someone to the team. Add that little spice in there to get your fighter confident. He knows that this is a great trainer and a good corner man. He's going to follow direction. Well, that's what Durant said. Two minds are better than one. I brought Tommy in to trade notes on Mayweather. See Mayweather stand in the pocket just like the quarterback on the football team. You get in that pocket, nothing bad can happen to you. You just got to be brave to try it. He's got his disguise outside of his left hand. One of the best examples we've ever seen of this in-the-pocket concept. Oh, look at Floyd Mayweather painting Philip Endo with power shots. And Mayweather promised a six-round knockout. Endo was hurt with three straight big hand punches. Yeah, Endo's legs are getting a little wobbly as Floyd keeps pounding him with right hands. This is a stirring performance. Mayweather is unloading his offensive kitchen. It's time for the corner to come in now. Endo not throwing back as Mayweather fires at will. Now the South African comes out of his goal runs. He's taking pot shots. He's taking pot shots. Mayweather standing in the pocket like a matador right there before the bull. Not moving, standing his ground. You suspect that Philip Endo has never seen anything like the speed and technical brilliance of Floyd Can Mayweather. Can you believe he's coming back? You suspect that Floyd Mayweather has never seen anything like the courage and determination courage. of Philip Endo. Courage. Courage. Brilliant determination. Look at Endo go. I don't know how long he can sustain that. But it's brilliant stuff we're seeing here. Brilliant stuff. More, I to say it. more action than in the two versions of the first fight. Four versions of the first fight. More action than you ever dreamed you'd see in a Floyd Mayweather fight. One of the great rounds of the year. Just a non-stop display early in the round of big punches, but Endu survived that barrage and came back while Mayweather was trying to recover and kept him on the ropes. By copy box estimate, Endo threw a hundred punches in the fifth round, and this despite the fact that you wondered if he was going to survive the first minute and a half of the round. Mayweather best stay off those ropes. When in doubt, punch. 
This is the round in which Floyd Mayweather promised the Grand Rapids faithful and local media that he would knock Endo out. And he's trying for it. Two perfect left hooks. Endo wobbles into the ropes. There are bruises around the right eye oh, of Mayweather, but he is landing huge shots on Endo now. Just perfect accuracy for Floyd Mayweather's power shots. Balance, timing, leverage, and look at Endo try to come back. Mayweather's fight is in the middle of the ring. He gets up against the rope. Endo starts throwing shots like nothing you've ever seen. Well, he told us about that rite of passage of manhood in South Africa, but Endo is going through another rite of passage right here in Grand Rapids. And down he goes on our Floyd Mayweather right hand shot, and Frank Garth is going to say it was a slip. How in the world was that a slip? Mayweather's going to try to emphasize the point. Oh, what a right hand. How did Endo stand up? You can't land these punches any more flush than Mayweather's landing them. Ooh. Partially blocked. The second right hand was partially blocked. Endo's getting his gloves up. Here he comes again. Boy, he's taking a beating. And Mayweather momentarily punched out. Yeah, you gotta take a break. You gotta take a break. break. You gotta look at this guy like he's an oak tree or something. How in the world is he taking those punches? He got a tremendous break from the referee who somehow ruled that a slip when Endo went to the canvas. I thought it was about as clean a knockdown as you'll well, see. Well, he, he ruled it a push. There was a push and block, but I agree that without uh, Mayweather's punch behind it, there wouldn't have been a, a, a fall down. Now Mayweather's snapping that left jab. Well, unbelievable this Endo. Endo goes back to the body. Endo is unbelievable. Another right hand thunderbolt from Mayweather, and another flurry from Endo. And those punches are hard, although in, in retaliation, they are really hard from Endo. Another great round. Hey, you're getting hit too much. We can't let this happen now. Hey, listen to me. This is your life and this is your career, son. We can't let you get beat up like this. Yeah. You gotta do something about that now. So keep your hands up. You're gonna keep your hands up. I'm giving you another round out there now, okay? Keep, hey, listen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, what you doing, baby? Keep punching me. Keep punching him to the body. Mayweather has had three right hands over that lower left from Endu all night long. And let's take a look at the knockdown. I thought that right hand disoriented Endo, Endo for a moment, and that's what really caused the knockdown. Sent him off balance, and a push put him down. That's why the referee saw that. He saw more of that. Good call. The copy box numbers found Mayweather landing 18 to 22 power shots in that round. 82%. And you heard what Tommy Brooks and Nick Durant said to Endo about that. You're going to have to try to show some defense. You can't just allow yourself to get beaten around the ring. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim. Five rounds to one. 59, 55, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, I tell you he's doing some job with that right hand. Tremendous snap, tremendous power to right hand. I'm talking about Mayweather. I, I mean, he really lands that right hand with great power. There's no question. This guy, his balance is beautiful. That right hand is coming in very, very hard. He's winning this kind of clean punch. Left hook's not bad either. Correct. You know what's good about it? Mayweather goes to the body after those head shots. It's not like Endo is going to get any better and any stronger. Body shots take it out of you. Tommy Brooks added the real, the real knowledge to the ring. Look, I'm not going to sit here and let you get beaten up like that. That's what you need when he's a trainer like that. Yeah, in essence, what Durant and Brooks were saying to Endo is, look, 
We know you have to be wild and reckless to get your offense off, but you just can't allow the guy to paint you constantly with clean shots. you got to defend yourself to some extent. Boom. So that's what they were worried about. The good part is Ndu in in is a puncher, so he can get back in the fight with one punch. That's it. I don't think Floyd's worried down. about his punches anymore. That's it. Looked like three or four straight right hands. Nick Durant is going to throw in the towel. Great. Nick Durant is showing Endo the towel. And Endo saying, no, don't throw it in. Endo is shaking his head at Durant saying, no, no, don't throw the towel in. And now the referee does it for him. Terrific fight. Terrific performance by Floyd Mayweather. But you know, if you're from South Africa, you can have a lot of pride tonight. This man showed that he was a beast. What a warrior. Punch and get it back. Made a lot of fans. Remember when John the Beast Mugabe fought so spiritedly against Marvin Hagler that everybody thought, well, you know, we got to see Mugabe again. People are going to want to see Endo again, too. Endo has made himself a star around here. I don't get. I don't think we've given Mayweather that much credit. He, he got in there and took some shots himself. Well, he never gave up. The night that he destroyed Corrales, he got a lot of credit and he deserved it. He was brilliant that night. The night that he tore up Gennaro Hernandez, he got a lot of credit and he deserved it. This is one of the three great performances of his career. <laughs> Here's that knockout again. Talk about the right hands, George, and the way he throws them. Oh, he counters once again with that right hand. He's confident. Poor range on it to do it again. And if he stands up, right there again. And that's a lot of punching to take. He misses him with the left hook. Right hook. You know, he's not regarded as a power puncher, but that's a textbook show of how to put your shoulder into the punch, right? He did everything right. Snatches his weight back right on top. Pull Trainers it back say, get right your on shoulder back. into it. Look at that. Then right over the ear. Right, right, right in the face. Right there. Seldom you'll see a fighter land three of the identical punches in finishing the guy off Mayweather did tonight. He's so good. He is that good. I think he should move up and wait to get more challenges like that. Well, that's what he says. The 140-pound weight class, obviously one of the most explosively talented in all of boxing, and Mayweather has claimed that this would be his last 135-pound fight. In fact, he says what he really wants to do is go up and fight Oscar De La Hoya at 154 pounds. Look at Michael Buffer, how good he looks. Oh, well, we're going to see him in a minute. What do you think about Mayweather? He should go up and wait. I mean, he's not going to. He's gonna... claiming he wants to go fight De La Hoya at he 154. He needs big guys to bring the best out of him. He's like that. Ever since he's been in the gym as a little kid, the big guys try to run over him. It made him better. He doesn't, it doesn't look good fighting a small guy. All right, now you wanted people to see how good Michael Buffer looks. Michael Let's take Buffer. a look as Michael gets you the final decision. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Garza calls a halt to this contest. The official time, one minute, 50 seconds of round number seven. The winner by knockout victory and still the undefeated WBC lightweight champion of the world, the pride of Grand Rapids, Michigan, pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. Still unbeaten, 31 wins, no losses, 21 knockouts, still unequivocally the kingpin of the lightweight division as he was at 130 before this, and a serious threat at 140 if he decides to move up. Mayweather, 158 out of 304, brilliant numbers. Endo threw 460 punches despite coming through a hailstorm of power shots from Mayweather to do it. Mayweather's accuracy in the power punching department may be some kind of a near CompuBox record or something. I mean, you just don't see it. 58%. Endo, 51 out of 269. Every one of those 269 power shots represents courage and determination on Endo's part because he was opening himself up to a devastatingly accurate puncher to try to get it done. You just never expect these kind of fights and you get them. That's like a treat. <laughs> Particularly after you got what you got in the first fight. Oh. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Floyd. That was a uh, terrific performance. Why did you feel you could stand and fight 
with Endo? First of all, I'd like to thank God for this victory because without him, all this wouldn't be possible. Um, I feel that um, I've never seen him fight before, but I know he's a big power puncher. And uh, just showing versatility, trying to show the fans that I can fight in the inside too and get the fans some exciting fights instead of moving every fight. Why haven't you done this before? Uh, switching up. I mean, I like to just, you know, get the victory the best way I know how. Today I feel if I let him throw all his power shots, you know, I'm catching him on my shoulder, catching him on my arm, eventually he'll wet down and I can get him in the later rounds. Do you feel that you can do this especially against a taller opponent? Well, um, I don't Because matter. you've had victories like this <laughs> against Corrales and, and uh, Gennaro Hernandez. I don't really know, you know, what opponents I can do it on, but... He was strong and tough, and I feel like, you know, once I move up to 140 pounds, uh, he'd take over the lightweight division. It's between him and Victoriano Sosa, between those two guys who are the toughest lightweights. All right, let's take a look at the knockout, and you describe what happened and why you saw that your right hand was, he was open for your right hand all night long. Well, I pulled counter. That's a pull counter. That was one, two, and I think, and three. And, and, and one more. Three. Probably even four. Did you notice quickly early in the fight that he was so open for that right hand or had you been uh, told by your brain trust that you could expect that? <laughs> well, my Uncle Roger said he watched tapes on him before, and before we came out the dressing room, he said, this is the type of jab you're going to be throwing. So you can look forward to using your pull counter and it, it, it will work in the fight. And so that's what I did and I feel good. Do you feel differently about coming off of a fight like this than you have from just dominating an opponent with your boxing skill? Well, I, yes, it feels good today to do this in front of my fans in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, these, these are my first fans. It feels good tonight. I feel good. There are some very good uh, challengers out there in the lightweight division still, like Les Cano and Casamayor and possibly Freitas, maybe some others. Why wouldn't you want to clean that up before <laughs> you moved up in weight? Well, I actually fight these guys in the past. I've been trying to get uh, Les Cano, Casamayor, free test in the past. These guys didn't want to fight me, so I'm going to move, move up to bigger and better things. I'm looking forward to fighting Arturo Gotti next. That's a big pay-per-view fight for me, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. I have to tell you, I don't want to bring you any bad news, but Arturo Gotti's manager, Pat Lynch, told me yesterday there would be no Gotti Mayweather <laughs> fight in 2004. Well, if, so so then where, where do you go? Why would you go up there and if you if you have good challengers at 135. Well, these guys, they say they want to fight, but then they don't ever want to fight. They've been there for the longest. Well, that has to do with money. You know that. Uh, well, I got to get the, you know, I got to get the, the big piece of the money because uh, I'm going to prove myself over and over again, man. Floyd Mayweather is willing to fight any fighter from 154 on down. You bring him and I'll take him. You can mark my word to that.